Ableton's audio effect rack is seriously one of its most powerful devices. So today I'm going to show you a few different ways which you can use them. But before I jump in, if you want some free music production stuff, go check out that free downloads link below. So I like my snares to be really sizzly in the top end and when you create lots and lots of tracks you find yourself recycling techniques that work, which is totally fine to do by the way. It just means that using an audio effect rack in this case is just going to speed up the process so you can spend more time actually creating. So for me, uh, a really common thing that I'll do is go through and listen to the snare. So this is what my drums sound like. I'm listening to this snare and I want a little bit more sizzle, so I'm just gonna add an amp device, right? And turn down the volume, put it onto dual mode, turn down the dry wet, maybe turn the presence up a bit, and it, and it adds a really nice sizzly top end. And then I'll probably go grab an EQ and sort of cut out the low end Right, cut out this. And then maybe the top end is a tad too harsh, so I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit. And this is something that I find myself doing all the time, so we may as well just like group this, Command G, and then if you pull this up, you can Command R and name this Crisp Snare. This is just a really good way of working because I can just save this really easily into my audio effect rack presets and it's just right then and there, just super easy to do. And now whenever I want this on a snare and another track in the future, just grab it and drag it on. And now every snare is gonna be different, so let's go and grab a different snare like this one, right? And I can just go in here and let's say I've just loaded this on tweak this to sort of just sit beneath the fundamental and tweak this how I want it as well. And it just still makes the same sort of crisp snare feel that I like. So this is just a really good way of automating a utility process. So you might just be doing the same thing every single track, right? So now it's saved. I actually have a whole bunch of folders within my audio effect rack section in the user library, and I can just grab this crisp snare and just drag it into drum processing, right? So now this has all my drum processing racks in there, and it's really easy to find it, especially with my collections over here. So I've named this one racks, and then I've gone into the user library, and then I've clicked this and added it to the rack collection and then so now it's all uh, organized really easy to go and I can just go over here and just go into drum processing and grab this crisp snare and just place it wherever I want and there it's ready to go so the next technique is one knob racks and this is just sort of stepping it up slightly to the next level where we still have a specific action in mind so like adding saturation to a drum bus but we want a little bit more control over how much of that thing that we want to add so uh, one knob rack is a really good way of doing this i've got one here so now we can see this is designed for drum bus saturation and you can hear when i solo the drum bus So it's really interesting how this works for me because in the past I have done uh, audio effect racks with heaps of knobs and I just find myself gravitating towards the more simple ones, the ones that have less knobs and have a more specific function as well. So this sort of one knob stuff is really good for the workflow, it just simplifies things and you can add multiple one knob racks together to make more complex sounds as well. That's not to say if you want more knobs, it's really easy to just like add another one and then sort of map some other stuff to it. So how is this one set up? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's worth talking about a little bit. So I'm just going to go open up this device panel and ungroup this. And so now this is just all of the things that I used within this one knob. So I've got these three different types of distortion saturation and then an EQ here. And then I just have a utility for some gain control. And I'm just gonna go ahead and group all of these and pull up a macro and just turn these macros down to one. You can also color this macro if you like and name it something that you want, crush. So when you're making these, it's sort of best to go one by one. So maybe you just have this saturator first and you like to distort your drum. So what's probably the maximum level of distortion that you want? You just go up to that, right? And just try and get the output to match it. And then you can hit this little M here and click on the thing you wanna map, like the drive. Click map, 
after you map something, set the minimum and maximum values right then and there. It's just going to speed up the whole process. So I want the minimum value to be uh, zero and then the maximum value to be something like sort of like 10 decibels or something, right? And so now it's going to be going from zero to 10. And as you do this, you'll start to un uncover problems. So like this is just uh, increasing a lot of volume while I'm doing this. So I'm just going to map the output of this device to compensate. So at uh, the minimum is going to be zero decibels and the maximum is going to be like minus, minus eight, let's say. So now this is becoming slightly more distorted, but it's also not increasing any volume. And then you can do the same with the other effects you have on here as well. And this goes on and on. It's actually crazy how many things you can do with one knob. You can actually turn on devices uh, at specific sections of the knob. So if you wanted to do a creative knob, you could do one that has like different filters at different sections of the knob, uh, turns on reverbs and delays at particular sections of the knob. Uh, there's so many different things you can do here. So it's really cool. Go experiment with it and see what you can do with it. So this knob, you'll notice what I've done is just mapped a whole bunch of different drives and gains. I've also mapped the low end of this channel EQ to boost a little bit uh, to compensate for the loss of low end that happens when you distort something. And the combination of all of these different saturation distortions makes a really cool tone as well. So the next one is like a signature sound rack. And as you produce more, you find yourself uh, gravitating towards particular creative decisions. Like uh, I personally really like moving filtered echoes and delays and reverbs. So uh, I actually don't have a rack for this. So I'm gonna make one right now and sort of experiment around and see what we can do. I'm going to process this stab with some uh, filtered echo and filtered delay. So let's just have a listen to this section first. It's this stab that I'm going to be processing. Uh, get some reverb and maybe we'll get some delay, some echo as well. And I'm just going to group both of these with Command G and pull up the chain selector and create uh, two more chains and pull, pull the reverb into one of them. And so we've got one with uh, echo on it and one with reverb. And then this one is just a dry chain, right? And so I'm gonna turn all of these up to 100% wet. And the thing that I love to do is to go grab an auto filter, chuck it onto bandpass mode and like put it in the middle and, uh, and just turn this LFO amount up and what this is going to do is it's sort of going to like pan around like this and then uh, you'll hear the echo and the reverb sort of modulate and change so we can copy this and chuck it onto the reverb chain as well so I'm just going to have a listen to the reverb chain here so you can hear how that's sort of moving around and changing each time it hits it's a pretty cool effect And the exact same with the echo as well. Maybe we can add a bit of character, maybe some wobble to it. All right, so now it's modulating nicely. You can even add a little bit of a resonance boost around here as well. And now with the dry signal as well. Cool, so this is something that I really do all the time. And I may as well, while I'm here, uh, map these to a few different macros as well. So uh, I can map the actual chain amount over here. This is pretty much like a dry wet for each of them uh, to these macros. So I'm gonna map the echo to one. I'm gonna just hit the reverb, map that to macro two. And then the dry chain, oops, I just randomized it. The dry chain, I'm just gonna hit that and map it to macro three. So now we have this rack that has a bunch of different macros in it and we can call it something like filtered, uh, echo and reverb, ENR. And then just go ahead and save that. And I'm just gonna chuck that into the sound design folder, right? <laughs> I've got this sample here as well. 
very dry and needs some processing. The beauty of this is I can just go into my rack section, go into my sound design and grab that rack that I just made and just chuck it on there and just see how it goes. So I've actually realized that I've just saved it uh, with values that I didn't necessarily want on there. So what I'm going to do is just click all these values, reset them all to zero. And then I'm actually going to click save again and hit enter and then just override it. And now this sample, which was really dry before, is going to have some nice processing. on it. So in this case, I'm not really vibing the ping pong and I'm just going to change this back to normal stereo mode on the echo. And I'm just going to grab this LFO, which is making the pumping effect and just pull it after the echo as well. And what I'm also going to do in this case is just show the automation here and just turn off this whole device between these sections here. And I think that's going to make it sound a little bit more dynamic as well, because I don't really want the tail to be rolling over this section. So let's have a listen. So saving these kind of racks is a really good way of developing your sound because you start to generate common threads within your songs and that's where a sound is sort of generated from, right? Effect racks are also a great way of generating tension. So if I was to grab an auto filter and put it onto a high pass uh, and then just go like this, you can see that it's creating a whole bunch of tension, right? So what I'm going to do is just Command G, group this into uh, an audio effect rack again and make another like one knob rack. But this time it's less of a mixing context and it's more of a build up. So if I just map this filter frequency over this knob here and then uh, I'm going to set the maximum to around about like 1300 maybe. And then I'm also going to map, map this, this resonance, set the minimum to something like uh, 10 and the maximum to something like 50. And let's sort of have a look and see how high it goes. That's nice. And then we can add something like a, a reverb in there as well. So I'm going to grab one of those. And now I'm just going to map this reverb uh, dry wet to the knob as well. So maybe have it zero to 50. And let's just have a listen to this. I don't want this auto filter to be on the whole time. So what I'm going to do is actually map the uh, on off switch of this to this macro as well. And I'm going to turn the minimum to one and the maximum to zero. And that is going to make it so when I move this knob, it's going to turn it on and it's gonna be off when it's at zero. Now where this becomes really powerful and experimental is where I can actually just go grab another rack that I've made. So maybe this sound design filtered echo and reverb rack that I made before and just chuck it in there as well. And what we can do is map these functions over to this knob as well. So that's good. And now we have some filtered echo happening when I bring up this knob as well. really fun way of using audio effect racks. And the last one here I'm just going to quickly touch on is using utility racks as well. So I've saved this one. It's called my utility frequency rack. And this just has a whole bunch of different like EQs in there. And it's got a, a mono switch and also a side switch. And what you can do is just put this on any sound, whether it's your master or mix bus or any particular sound that you want to listen to. And you can actually just hit this, hit the zero key and also hit the arrows and sort of just turn these on and off. So let's say I want to just listen to the sides of my track. Or if I want to just listen to the low end. Or if I want to listen to the sides in the low end. So there's a little bit of low end in the sides, maybe I need to clean them up. Or I can listen to the, uh, the top end sides. Oops. And you can actually map these to keys on your keyboard as well. So I can hit Command K and you can see that I've mapped these to six, seven, eight, nine on my keyboard. So 
I can just, you know, sort of hit the six, seven, eight, nine and play these in different combinations of each other. And it's a really good way of checking your mix. So that's it. Those are all the tips that I have. I uh, hope you've learned a few things about audio effect racks and the power of how you can leverage them in Ableton. If you have any burning questions about audio effect racks, please leave a comment below and I'd love to answer it. If you've enjoyed the video, as always, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.